Hello, this is Mrs. White and I will be talking about inherited traits. Now before we start, our focus for today is for us to answer these questions. What are inherited traits? And how are traits governed by the genetic material found in the genes within chromosomes in the cell nucleus? And we're going to answer all of these today. Now before we start, I'd like you to observe this family tree. As you notice, the mom is brunette, curly hair, and blue eyes, while the dad has blonde hair, straight hair, and brown eyes. Now, they produced an offspring with brunette hair, curly hair, and brown eyes. Why is that? Well, it has to do with heredity. So when you say heredity, it is the transfer of traits from one generation to another generation. Now this started, this idea started when Gregor Mendel, we know as the father of uh, modern genetics, influenced our knowledge on basic principle of heredity. And that is through the experimentation that he did in the monastery. Now let's take a look at some inherited traits and we can also compare that with the study of Gregor Mendel um, on inherited traits. So let's start first with what inherited traits are. So when you say inherited traits, it is the characteristic or features of one organism that are inherited or passed on from parents to offspring. Now in humans, here are some examples of inherited traits. We have freckles, eye or hair color, dimples. In animals, you also can observe some similarities on eye or hair color, hair texture, and of course the face shape. Now in plants, we have leaf shape, we have plant height, flower color, and so on. Now let's take a look at dominant traits. Now in sixth grade, you guys have learned about the dominant trait. So when you say dominant trait, these are the traits that hide other traits because it kind of like dominates, okay, or overpower. And this is usually passed on from parents to offspring. Now this shows a specific trait, even if only one parent actually passed that on to their child. And when a child inherits a dominant trait, such as brown hair, then the child will have brown hair. Now let's take a look at the recessive traits. So when you say recessive traits, these are the traits that normally gets hidden by dominant traits. Now this shows that this specific trait, both parents must have the trait before it can be passed on to their offspring. And when a child inherits this recessive trait, let's say for example, the blue eye gene from both mom and dad, then the child will have blue eyes. But if one parent does not have any blue eyes, blue eyes is a recessive trait, then most likely the kid will not have blue eyes. Now, how are traits passed? So here's the question. Well, the, when organisms reproduce, Traits are passed from parents to offspring, and it all begins in the organism's cell. Now, in sixth grade, we learned about what cells are, and cells have this part called the nucleus, and we know that it directs any activities that the cell have to do. So cells are the basic building blocks of any living things. And like I mentioned earlier, the cell contains this hereditary material and it is found in the nucleus and it can make copies of themselves. Now let's take a look at the nucleus that I was talking about. So when you say nucleus, it is a small egg-shaped structure inside the cell and we know that it acts like a control system, like the brain of the cell. Now it tells every part of the cell what to do and it contains the chromosomes and the genes. And these genes pretty much stores that trait that we saw earlier in terms of heredity. And this is found in our DNA. 
Now let's take a look at what chromosomes are. So when you say chromosomes, these are thread-like structures that are found in the nucleus of a cell that contains all the DNA. And each chromosome is made of protein in a single molecule of the DNA. Now, usually it comes in matching sets of two and the human cell nucleus contains 46 chromosomes or you can also call that 23 pairs of chromosomes. Now, half of these chromosomes come from one parent and the other half comes from another parent. Now, how about the DNA? So when you say DNA, this is also called the oxyribonucleic acid. It is a molecule that carries the genetic instruction for all living organisms. Now, like I mentioned earlier, deoxyribonucleic acid, that's how you spell it. DNA is just a short term, but I'd like you to remember deoxyribonucleic acid. Now, this contains specific instructions that make each type of living creatures unique. This also determines how the cells in the body will also work and function. Now, what about genes? What are genes? So when you say genes, genes determine the trait that we know of, that we can see. And now this is a stretch of DNA on a chromosome with instructions for one trait. Now, like chromosomes, genes also come in pairs. Now, each parent has two copies of each of their genes, and each parent passes along just one copy of this trait to make up the genes of their offspring. Just going back at the big picture. So cell contains nucleus, and in the nucleus, it contains the chromosomes. And in the chromosomes contains the DNA, and the DNA contains the genes. What about acquired traits? Well, acquired trait has nothing to do with the traits that we have in our DNA, but these are physical characteristics of an organism that is not passed down from parents to offspring. Now, it is a learned trait, and it is a product of the environment's influence on the organism. Now, let's summarize what we have learned today. First, we talked about what inherited traits are. Second, we talked about how inherited traits can be passed on from parents to offspring. And also, we explain how the genes are pretty much responsible for having these particular traits that we see here in front of us and how actually these sets of instructions shape the way we are and how unique we are from each other. I hope this helps in understanding what inherited traits are because we are going to talk about more of these inherited traits that could actually cause mutation later on. And I'll see you in class. Bye!